so we begin very quickly with the first case. We are going to, uh, I, I will show you a case, then uh, Dr. Di Bonito will show you the next one, and we try to be quick and as interactive as possible. Okay, so we begin with the first case, and uh, this is a woman, 48 years old, and um, she has a, a dead pat test. So uh, we are discussing, I explain, explain, you don't need to have something explained there. It's a clear case with uh, uh, larger cells and w at least one cell with dark nuclei, uh, dark and bad, and uh, it's a B nucleation. And so everything, I suppose, is clear. Then if you look at other parts of the smear, you find that, and again, something is not really beautiful. And if you look at, have you, have you understand these cells? Yes? Can I go? And then if you look further, you find that cell. And if you look even further, you find these cells. And if you look a little more, a little further, you find these cells. So now, very quickly, my question is, what's that case? So what's the diagnosis of that case? Uh, uh, who is going to call it, no, negative, nobody. We're going to call it ASCOS. So undefinite for nobody. Huh? Who is going to call it low cell? Who is going to call it low cell? with these large cells, by nucleation, nobody. Who is going to call it high cell? Is somebody going to call it high cell? No. Who is going to call it squamous cancer? One, two, Three, so everybody else is going to call it maybe adenocarcinoma in situ because we do not have much more diagnosis uh, 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 to. to uh. So, uh, three of you are calling it squamous cancer, and uh, the other don't, uh, don't, don't, don't have a diagnosis. Or, anyway. Uh, we are going uh, uh, to discuss these uh, uh, cells now. And of course, the first thing to do, as usual, is to decide uh, what is the pattern you are dealing with. So in that case, of course, uh, we are going, we are speaking about large squamous cells. So the differential diagnosis is quite, uh, quite simple. Actually, you are in this condition. You have large or typical squamous cells, and you have the first decision is, do you see nucleoli or you do not, don't see nucleoli? Because if you see nucleoli, the main differential diagnosis will be uh, between uh, a tissue repair and a squamous cancer, non-keratinizing type. Uh, but we didn't see nucleoli. If uh, you look actually at that picture, that's a binucleation with dark chromatin almost pycnotic, and uh, this actually, so no nucleoli, it looks actually nuclei, okay, there's a little hyperchromatic, yes, and uh, you may have a binucleation and actually it looks as a low cell. So low cell would be correct on this cell. But the point is, if that you look at the second group of cells, that one, that's different because you have here a higher typicality, you have no nucleoli, a high grade typicality, a lot of polymorphy, and the only possible diagnosis is a keratinized squamous cell cancer. So that was correct for the three of, our, of you who decided for cancer. And uh, remember that in cases of, in some cases of keratinizing cancer, it may happen. Uh, particularly if you have a low cellularity, that the first impression is the impression of a low cell. And only looking further, looking carefully, you may find the high-grade atypicality that the diagnostic for 
a squamous cancer. Okay? That was a histology and squamous cell cancer. So, Luigi. Okay. Thank you. The, the other. C'è Giovanni per andare avanti? So, it's my first cases, and uh, we see about, uh, I think uh, it's very important before to start to know something about the woman. So what we can say, 35 uh, five years old patients, Quindi is, she's quite young, 35. And another thing is very important, 21 week of pregnancy. So she's pregnant, she's pregnant, and she undergo the colposcopy, and the colposcopy said polypoid deciduosis. But she had vaginal bleeding. So we decided to have the cytology. Cytology, and we had epithelial hypercellular layer with microvacuolated cytoplasm. and some classes, three-dimensional clusters. Large nuclei. And evident nucleoli. Do you want to see again? Or you... I don't want to know your diagnosis, but I would like to have just one, that everybody in his mind make diagnosis. After, we will see what is, and everybody can know, yes, I am right, mm, I, I was wrong. Okay? So, I don't ask anything. <laughs> So, I don't want to know. It's just for yourself. Okay? But uh, please tell me if it's okay what you have seen or you need to see again. It's okay? You have an idea? You have an idea. So, it's negative. Oh, we would like to share a little bit. I would just say negative. It's in squamous lesion or glandular lesion. Or nothing. Or is negative. Can I ask? I, I just don't see. How many people say negative? Nobody. How many people say squamous lesion? Nobody. How many say Glandular lesion. Glandular lesion. Okay. In glandular lesion, we have a typical glandular cell. We have adenocarcinoma in situ, adenocarcinoma. How many atypical glandular cell? One, two, three, four, atypical, five. Okay. Somebody, atypical glandular cell. Adenocarcinoma in situ. Nobody. Adenocarcinoma? One, two, three, four, five. We had large, look well, nuclei with the thick net nuclear membrane. Irregular distributed chromatin. Macronucleoli, eccentric position of nuclei, microvacuolated cytoplasm, tumor diathesis. So, our diagnosis was 
endocervical adenocarcinoma. Endocervical, this is, was the biopsy. And the biopsies relieved an endocervical adenocarcinoma with villoglandular uh, aspect. And this is, was the hysterectomy. And uh, I think in colposcopy, they said this it was. It's, it's really. And uh, after this, in the cut surfaces, showed in uh, neoplasm with mainly a sophitic grow pattern. And we had the microscopic aspect. The majority was well differentiated adenocarcinoma. And sometimes we find also some solid aspect, clear cell, and some signed rings cell aspect in the same tumor in the same tumor, because uh, I think that now, in the past, we had just a cut of many years ago, just a cut, and we found just one histotype. Now that we cut all the tumor, often we can see different histotype in the same tumor. So, which would be the messages in these cases? Don't be de uh, deceived from the age. Don't be deceived from the pregnancy. If you have an aspect of cancer, okay, if you are not sure, you have its suspicion. You have to say suspicion because with the pregnancy, you have to be very uh, quiet in, say, cancer because you could have mistake. But if you are really see, sure that is a cancer, you can say cancer. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we have a similar situation, constellation, because again, it's a pregnancy. And that is really a, a, a particular. Uh, uh, the woman is 28 years old, and so that is a low magnification, and you see, of course, it's a, actually a relatively beautiful pap test. There's just a little leukocytes, and then you have that. And if you look at higher magnification to these cells, we find that. And maybe if you look at even higher magnification, we find that. It's not particularly beautiful. The nuclei are, are relatively dark. You have the impression that there are a couple of micronucleoli there. And then, and then you look at the other part of the smear. And you find that. And if you look at higher magnification, you are going to find, uh, to look at, do you see that? And now you are you have seen all the cells and now you have to decide. You know it's always Friday, five o'clock. It's the last case, you're alone in the laboratory. The telephone rings, it's a gynecologist, head gynecologist, and tells you I need the diagnosis, it's my wife. It's always Friday. So now you have to make a diagnosis and, uh, oops. So who is going to call that uh, negative? Who is going to call it negative? Uh, who is going to call it uh, low cell? High cell? High cell? Couple of high cells? Just a little more? Okay, uh, it it's works almost at an action, so yeah. Uh, uh, who is going to call it uh, glandular? Cancer, squamous cell cancer. 
Nobody. Who is going to call it glandular lesion? Maybe, uh, as Luigi said, between ad AZC, adenocarcinoma, I guess. One, two. Okay, that's uh, between high cell, high grade lesion. Okay, we look again at these cells, and what is interesting in these cells, there are a couple of things that are very important. First of all, we had just a small number of groups. We, had, we have seen just a couple of groups, and we have a very clean background. We have no tumor diatheses. And the second point is that we have uh, nuclei that are dark, yet yeah, a little hypochromatic. They are enlarged. Uh, they have micronucleoli. And have you, have you ever seen a high cell with micronucleoli, a cell with micro with nucleoli? It doesn't happen so often. So it's, it's, it doesn't fit completely with a cell. And the second point is that the cytoplasm is quite microvacuolated. You see that? So with these criteria in the mind, we try to put that now in the again in the large cells. So actually, it doesn't fit in non-keratinizated squamous cell cancer, nor in keratinized squamous cell cancer, because we have no micronucleola, we have no keratinization, we have no tumor diathesis. You can remember the other case. It was full tumor diathesis. The case by Dr. Di Bonito had tumor diathesis. And we don't see tumor diathesis there. On the other side, it doesn't fit to a low cell because it's, it's, it's of the micronucleoli and because of the, of the, of the microvacuolated cytoplasm. Have you ever seen a low cell with microvacuoli in the cytoplasm? I, I've never seen one. So it doesn't fit in that. Maybe we can't rely on that. We have to look a little further. And uh, remembering that the woman is actually in pregnancy, there is another differential diagnosis. And the sidewalk changes. The sidewalk. So um, in that case, uh, you see here, it's not, we are not speaking about a low cell because in a low cell we would have a lot of nuclear polymorphy, far more than here. Look, it's binucleation, hyperchromatic, almost peak notes, nuclei, chromatin, really dark. And a clear anisonucleosis and no microvacuolization of the cytoplasm, no micronucleoli. And this actually, it, 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 it fits with the sidewall cells. And you can find the sidewall cells in about 10% of smears in pregnancy. And the typical differential diagnosis is maybe with reactive changes, maybe because of the micronucleoli with uh, uh, tissue repair. And that's not a problem because it's negative. The second most frequent differential diagnosis with a low cell, or maybe also with a Hi, so we are going to discuss it later. Okay, that was the first group. But of course, you, can, you may have decidualizes, decidual cells, and something else. What's that? Is that fitting with decidual cells? So what do we have as differential diagnosis in that case, too? So because of the uh, slightly glandular pattern, so you almost see a papillary pattern here. Uh, again, you have a microvacuolization of the cytoplasm, and uh, you have, again, very similar nuclei. So what could be else? So we, we try to, to, to put it in the algorithm of atypical glandular cells. So it's not, of course, a, a, a nanocarcinoma in situ. You do not have nuclear crowding. You do not have elongated nuclei. You do not have feathering. It's not an adenocarcinoma, as in the case of Dr. Di Bonito, because you do not have macronucleoli, you have only sparse, very small amount of cells, and you have no tumor diathesis. This is a key, one of the most important keys for the diagnosis of cancer in, the, uh, 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 in uh, pregnancy, particularly. And of course, you do not have uh, 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 endometrial. No, it doesn't look as endometrial. It do doesn't have a mark of vacuolization. It doesn't have. It could be something else. It could be an iris stellar phenomenon. So this is a quite relatively common uh, uh, change uh, in the in pregnancy. You may find it in at one nine percent of all uteri uh, in surgical specimens but it's very rarely found in cytology. You usually don't, don't see them. 
Uh, and if you see them, uh, you have a clearly glandular pattern. As you can see here, and you have, may have uh, some uh, uh, a pseudo inclusion nuclei. Look at here in the histology, you have the same. And you have, a, in the histology, you may have a higher typicality, you may have in the cytology too. And that is the reason why, before making the diagnosis of adenocarcinoma in pregnancy, you should wait, should wait to have all the criteria, as in the case of Dr. Di Bonito. But pay attention if you do not have all the criteria, think three times about. Uh, that before making the diagnosis. In that case, actually, I think that these changes may also fit more with the seed well changes because we have again the um, uh, uh, microvacualization of the cytoplasm because we have the nuclear are very consistent with the, the seed well changes and uh, because we already had them and so uh, the case is actually negative. You agree with me? Yes? Everybody? Yeah? Now I change a little the premise. This woman is coming as a consequence of a HPV positivity in primary HPV screening, and this is a triage uh, uh, case. Are you still calling negative? Yes or no? Why not? It's clearly, it's, do you think that HPV changes the morphology? Are you convinced that these are decidual changes? Yes. So why will you, will you, are you going to call it with another diagnosis? It was negative before, it stays negative. It's negative even if it's HPV positive. Okay? Thank you.